What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how the app Vector Styler works? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and I'm a media design educator and I'm constantly on the hunt for new apps that can help you in your design workflow. And because of that, I do these challenges which are called the Can It Design Challenges where I try apps that I find or that are recommended by the community that are design apps that you might be able to use in your workflow. Today's challenge comes from Ward Day Jagger, who asks that we take a look at the app Vector Styler, which he says can rival Adobe Illustrator and is even better than Affinity Designer. So we're going to be checking that out today. I've gone ahead and downloaded the free trial. I'm not sure what that means. It just said on the website, try. So I went ahead and downloaded that. I downloaded the version for the M1 Mac because I'm using my M1 iMac to try this out. But there are versions for other versions of Mac as well, and even a beta version for the PC. So we're going to dive in, we're going to look, and we're going to see if this can do the basic functions that we need as graphic designers. I'm especially interested because he said it was close to Adobe Illustrator to see if it has some of the tools that we've been missing in Affinity Designer, things like a Shape Builder tool or a Vector Warp tool or a Blend tool, things like that. So let's go ahead, dive in and see. I haven't opened this up before, so this is going to be my first time looking at it along with you. All right, here we are. We have opened up Vector Styler and we're going to go ahead and take a look. Now, one note, when I'm recording a window on my Mac, you can't, of course, see the menu options up at the top. You'll see them when I open them, but you can't see them up at the top, but the menu options are there. First impression here is this looks a lot like a regular creative program. There are tools on the left, looks like, and panels on the right. So they aren't really trying to mix things up, which is really a good thing because it just makes it easier for people to be able to transition. If you are an incoming player in a market, you need to make it as simple as possible. And so let's go ahead and take a look. We should be able to figure this out fairly easily. We're going to make a new file. So we'll just do file and looks like we can do a new document setup. And I should mention that when I did open this up before the recording started, it did pop up and tell me I have 42 days left on my trial after which time I will need to purchase a license. So it sounds like it's fully featured in trial mode, but you do need to purchase a license after 42 days. I'm not quite sure why it's 42 days. That's an interesting number of days, but it's quite a long trial considering that Adobe only gives you seven days of Creative Cloud trial. So you should have plenty of time in there to be able to figure out whether or not this works for you. I did look on the website. It does cost $95 for a license. So that would be what you'd be looking at. That is about twice the price of Affinity. But if it's got some of the features that are missing from Affinity, it might be worth it. Okay, so we've got the new document window here. There are presets if you have saved them and we can set this up. Let's change this to pixels right now and change the ruler to pixels. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a 1000 by, oh, no, that's resolution. I didn't read what it said there. So we'll keep it at 300, that's fine. So there's a few things you can do here. Oh, it looks like you can set up artboards. Okay, color mode. Okay, you can choose the number of canvases and artboards. I'm not sure what the difference between the canvas and the artboard is going to be. Let's go ahead and let's just see how this works. We'll add two artboards and see what happens. Looks like we have some control over the artboards here and what size they're going to be. I'm just going to go with a custom here and just do 1000 by 1000. Canvas must be the thing on which the artboards sit. So probably fine and you can set up margins and guides we're just going to be doing what we normally do when we don't have a specific challenge given to us and we're going to try and make a van but we'll also try out some of the other tools to see what we have as far as different options go so let's go ahead and we won't do anything with guides right now we're just going to go ahead and click OK and we immediately get an artboard here so interestingly, I'm seeing all these colors down at the bottom. That's where I initially see, which reminds me a lot actually of Inkscape. Looking over here at the tools, some things immediately jump out to me. I think I see a Shape Builder tool here. There it is. So we've got a Shape Builder tool. So there's a plus one for Vector Styler right there. It's already got a Shape Builder tool. We'll see how that works. I have seen a Warp tool. So there's another one, Arc Warp. So we'll have to see how that works. Distortions, Elastic Warp. I think I see a Blend tool. Yep, there's a Blend tool. So they're using icons that are very, very similar to Illustrator. So it's easy to figure out where you're going here. Got a Mesh Gradient, which is great. That's another thing that Affinity is missing. So it looks like a lot of the tools here are specifically targeting things that are found in Illustrator that are not found in Affinity. Looks like we might have a Width tool, a oh, Stroke tool. Yep, so that's probably just like the Width tool. Liquify tool, Gradient Editor. Interesting. There's a contour tool. 
and a pattern tool. If it can do all these things, that's looking quite good to me. So let's go ahead and let's just start off. Let's test the pen tool, if we can find a pen tool here. There's pencil, several different pencil options, brushes, path drawing. That must be the pen tool. Looks like a pen tool. Let's just see what we can do here. And it's working as expected. Holding down shift keeps it in proportion. I can draw out a little wave here. Let's grab our move tool, see if we can move that around. Yep, easy. Um, shape editor. And it gives you a little helpful hints here. It says edit the attributes of shapes or nodes of paths. So let's try it. See if we hold down option, we can do just one handle at a time. Perfect. Okay, so that looks like it's the direct selection tool. And then there's a corner editor and oh there's a lot of tools under the corner editor anchor point tool scissor tool great there's a scissor tool here again that's something we were missing trim and join tool knife tool eraser tool path simplifier tool node remover tool corner size painter interesting and the path brush tool there are a lot of tools here that's for sure let's go ahead and draw a shape here. So it looks like we have a number of shapes, not as many as Affinity, but not so few as in Illustrator. And there's some grid options and concentric shapes. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. We will probably won't delve into everything this time. I want to try the corner tool though. So let's come here and let's see. Yep, so you can edit corners independently. So that's pretty easy. You can even edit sides of the corners independently. Okay, so very cool. And just like that, I think we've already got maybe the front of our van there as we try and make our van. But we won't try making anything right now. We're just going to test out a few more of the tools. So let's go ahead and let's just grab a couple shapes and let's test the shape builder. See if it works exactly how we might expect it to if we're coming from Adobe Illustrator. Looks like we can change the size of polygons. Okay, let's grab our shape builder tool. And, oh, of course we have to select first. So let's select all of those. Shape builder tool. And looks like we have plus and minus options. So let's try and add these together. I like that they showed you a different color so that you know what you're doing there. Subtract that from there. Subtract that. And yeah, that's working pretty much exactly like we would expect it to if we were coming from Illustrator. Looks like I got a little point there. So let's go to see if we can deal with that. Just delete that. Bring this node in. Okay, while we're on this shape, let's see what we can handle as far as color and stroke go. So it looks like we have fill and stroke here. Okay, there's a panels option up at the top here. You can see the menu here. And I'm looking for something that does swatches. Color palette. Okay, the color palette is the swatches. Let's try filling this with something purple. Not very many of the panels are open by default. So you kind of have to come here and see what you've got. I'm looking for the stroke. Okay, so we've got the stroke. Move that up here, add it into this group. And it looks like we have options for what we can do with the stroke as far as caps, corners, and that kind of thing. Dashed options, stripes, and then width profile. Okay. Okay, so a lot of different options that we find here. Looks like we have arrows as well. So great, there's a lot of different things you can do there. And under color, I just wanna see if there's different views here. The wheel and the sliders. Switch the sliders to different kinds, different wheels, spectrums. Very nice. Okay, very impressed so far, so let's keep going. This tool is the Collider tool. 
move and rotate objects considering shape collisions. Wow. Reflection tool, adjusting a gap. Scale tool, skew tool, rotate tool. So a lot of those tools that were individual tools in Illustrator that were kind of subsumed into other tools in Affinity Designer are separate tools here as well. Okay, so I think the next thing to try will be probably the blend tool. So let's try that. We'll just try and blend from a circle into a rectangle. Let's give it a different color here so we can see how it handles that. And then looks like we have two choices, blend tool and editing the blend map. So we'll start with the blend tool. Click on one, click on the other. No. Okay, drag between them. Okay, so it looks like it's doing a blend right there, which is great. And let's try and edit the blend map, see what that does. I'm not sure what this does. Looks like we can change the number of steps so we can make it smooth or can do a number of distance. Can do a fixed number. So let's say we want to just do like 10. You can do it in 10 steps. Okay, so there's the blend tool. And the next thing that I want to look at is the warp tool. Well, let's try adding some text first and then we'll try and warp that text. So let's just add some text here. It's a little slow putting in the text. Not sure why. So we have a center point. Okay, let's see if we can warp it. So there are a lot of warps. There's arc warp and a bunch of different types of warp. So let's just try the arc warp here. The text has disappeared. Not sure if it'll come back. It's too small. Okay, so that's not reacting exactly as I would expect it to, but I don't do a lot of warping, which is one reason why I've never really missed this tool too much in Affinity Designer. Let's try it on a shape. So there's a bunch of different warps you could do. Looks like it's working fine. All right, next let's try the stroke tool. Looks like there's a number of different tools under there as well. Brushes. Okay. Let's just see if we can. Okay, there we go. Get some points. Okay, it doesn't work exactly the way I'm expecting it to, but it does seem like you can adjust the width different points in there. And once you figure it out, it'll probably work fine. Okay, let's go ahead and let's make a new artboard and we'll actually try to design something here. Some people don't love it when I do these design challenges and I try and design something fairly simple, but simple is where you kind of have to start. And I'm just going to see if I can copy this over. Yes, on option drag copies. So it does exactly what we might expect there. And I'm looking to see if I have transform options either up in the top or on the side so that I can just flip this. There we go. Let's see stuff at the top there.
So now we've got our van. It's not much of a van yet, but we could do a lot more work on this. But you can see that you can pretty quickly start designing something, start putting something together here. Let's just see if we can go ahead and make an iteration of this. We always like to do. And I'm just going to go ahead and make there be no stroke. Let's see how that looks. Okay, good. So there's quite a bit that can be done here. Obviously, there's a lot more that you could do here. There's a lot of powerful things. It looks like there's stuff you can do in the effects, text, different styles you can use. There's a lot going on in this program, and I'm only just scratching the surface of it here. Okay, the last thing that we need to do here is see what we can export as. So let's go up and file and choose export because we have to know whether or not we can get it out in something that we can use. So it says style here. I guess that's file type. So of course we have JPEG and PNG, which we'll need SVG, which is great. It doesn't look like it can do Adobe Illustrator files, which is not weird. That's pretty normal. Um, we do have EPS here. So there are plenty of options here for getting it out and into a form that you could use or that your client could use. The only problem of course would be if you were working with somebody who was using Adobe Illustrator, you wouldn't be able to go directly to that. You'd have to go through EPS or SVG for that. Again, I've never looked at this program before, so this is just kind of my first pass through, but it looks like it's very capable of designing. And you could definitely use this for professional design work. I'm not seeing anything really in the pixel realm, so I don't know if it rivals a fan designer in dealing with pixel objects, which a fan designer is very, very good at and much better than Adobe Illustrator at, but this definitely seems to be the closest thing to Adobe Illustrator in terms of tool set that I've ever seen. It didn't seem really laggy except when we were working with text, but again, remember, I am on an M1 iMac, so I am seeing probably the best performance possible. There are plenty of tools and panels here left to explore, so again, there's a 40 two day free trial. So I think it's worth it to download it and check it out and see if it can do what you need it to do. This could be the program that a lot of people are waiting for. It's just $95, which again is about twice the price of Affinity, but does come with a lot of features that Affinity does not have. So if you've used Vector Styler before, go ahead, drop in the comments, let me know what you think of it. And if you have other programs that you want me to check out or things that you would like me to attempt in certain programs, go ahead and post those below for future design challenges. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.